I was laying there. I was about 12 metres from the, de the dead ball line. Just hop up, like, we'll just go off the back of the field. I'm like, man, my leg was sideways. Like, it was like, and it's like, oh, we'll just walk off. So I'm walking down this, the um, sideline, like, obviously not walking, but yeah. hobbling. And I was like, fellas, my leg was sideways. This is bad. Like, arguing with them. And I remember I looked up to the big screen and there's, it's funny, there's a photo of it and I'm like, arm around, I'm putting my thumb up. Because yeah. I see myself on the big screen and I'm like, I have like this sideways look on my face and you can see it in my face that like I know, yeah. I know what's just going on. Yeah. Welcome back to the Keegan and Company podcast. For those who are new to the show, my name is Keegan Hipgrave. And guys, if you haven't already, could I get you to jump over? Give us a little like and subscribe on whatever platform you listen to this podcast on, whether it's Apple, YouTube, Spotify. It's a great way for us to grow the podcast, grow the platform, and just have some incredible conversations like I'm going to have today. Uh, in this episode, I'm joined by former NRL player for the Melbourne Storm and Gold Coast Titans, Aaron Booth. Boothie, how are you, brother? I'm very well. It's been a good morning with you, so brother. I'm uh, ready to rip into this. It's um, It was a little bit wet than we um than we <laughs> originally planned. I think we were going to go, we we're going to do a cycle, but then fuck, it's like way too wet. Yeah. It's messy out there. It was, um, yeah, we was dripping wet. It was the longest I've ever run. <laughs> and it's Man. pissing down rain. There's no one out. The yeah. wind was knocking us off our feet, but it was good. I woke, I woke up this morning and I was just like, Far out. okay, we're, we're going to run. Like we said, we're going to run. Mm. So we're, we're definitely going to run. But it's like, we got over Corumban Bridge and it was howling. Yeah. It was so, it was so wet. Off, we were, yeah. Going for ankle deep puddles. And that was your, that's your biggest run to date. To date. Yeah. yeah. Far out. Before injury and everything. Like, Man. Biggest I, run. I'm pretty sure. I do. I do. From memory. I do really want to get into, we'll, we'll, we'll obviously touch on the injury and, mm. and everything like that throughout, throughout the pod. But um, mate, what's training looking like for you these days? Like out of a couple, probably a year out now, how um, yeah. training looking like? So I've just started getting back into the real swing of it. I sort of had, um, yeah, I think it August I officially retired yeah. and then sort of obviously had to take it on myself. So I, um, I had a, not a blowout, but I partied and I, I yeah. relaxed and yeah. I didn't train too hard for a period there and, um, didn't put on a little bit of weight, but, <laughs> um, not too much. And then sort of since the new year, I really dived back into it and yeah. I sort of got a little set up at home, got a bike, Sick. got some weights and all that. And then, um, working at the club, I was sort of still just using the space there. So yeah. the last probably... Yeah, 10, 12 weeks I've been really ripping back into my training and trying to feel fit and feel healthy again because I sort of, for being an athlete for so long and feeling like that that level of fitness that you sort of have when you're training all day, every day, um, I sort of didn't lose it but let it slip a little bit and I was like, yeah, I need to get back on the on the wagon. How do, you go, how do you go training at home by yourself? I actually enjoy it. Yeah. It's sort of peaceful. I don't mind getting up and just sort of getting moving. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't mind that. I do miss the the team environment and then we did a session on Wednesday Bro, so and good. then yesterday yeah. and then even running this morning I'm like yeah I need to join a community yeah, again, <laughs> yeah. It, even working at the club I was sort of in there before anyone getting my session done before we start still uh, even though I was in the in the communal gym I was still doing my own session yeah. so I definitely got the bug after the other day to to get back around a crew and and join in a in a group session again because I, I was the same as you like when i was in Coogee, um in sydney i had like a little home home gym set up i was training with a guy called um sean and then braith as well Braith yep. and i started like in Coogee, and this guy sean has got like the best home gym have you seen it's i've like, seen the footage you've yeah. seen the footage yeah, like yeah. this guy's got like and he trains out of there it's his business um he's got a gym uh, he just opened up a gym now which is which is pumping um, but that inspired me to do my own home gym. And I was like, well, if I'm going to be doing this for the next 10 years, I might as well just go out and just mm. buy it all. Um, but the cool thing was like having crew like coming through. So every Sunday morning we'd get like mates would come in, we'd do like a big session, then we'd go for a swim and a coffee afterwards, which is mad. Like I love doing that. But then yesterday we did a session um, with the RLPA as like a keep fit, keep connected um, initiative. And we had such a good crew there. Such right? a good crew. It was like, and even at the start, like just all just, just past players coming through and doing a session, just an excuse to catch up. It was, yeah. And it was so good. And the energy and the, and the feel of it. I remember walking up, like I did something the day before and I was like, oh, we'll just, it'll, I thought it was just going to be us. Yeah. Like catch up, pretty casual session. And then, you know, a coffee and a feed. Yeah. And we end up ripping, <laughs> ripping right in. <laughs> yeah, I was man. dripping, I was struggling, but it was good. And like looking around, everyone had that stoke and then sort of feeding off each other. So it was good mm -hmm. energy. And then, yeah. Good to get an old crew like that back together. Um, you could just feel like everyone's sort of getting that, just scratching that itch that I probably 
you probably don't get as much mm. sort of in retirement. So it's it's such a good initiative that it, you guys are doing. It's cool, man. And it's also cool, like, at the start when, like, you don't know who's coming and, like, and guys will roll in. They're like, oh, I haven't, like, haven't seen yeah. you. Like, what's doing? So, mate, we want to try and kick that off, like, once every quarter, I think. But not just, like, not just on the Goldie. Like, we did Brizzy the day before. Um, Tommy Simons was in the eastern suburbs. So we're going to do, like, them, like, all over in, like, the big mm. regional areas, um, which is so, so fun. Good. Like, well, that's, I think, probably, like, coming out of footy and probably something that Kenny chat to you about is like the connection piece around like yeah. leaving the game. Like once you're leaving the game, cause when you're in footy, like you're with the boys, like pretty much every single day. And then even when you're not with them, you're still probably getting coffee with them the next, yeah. like on the days off. Yeah. Yeah. Completely. And like, I was lucky with my transition the last six months I've been working with the same group. Mm. My schedule was the same. I was in, in the same group of mates, oh, well, same group of mates, same team. Yeah. So like, Things didn't change too much. And even I felt that like, not loss of connection, but like that separation a little bit of what I was so used to and that team environment and everything. And even just transitioning to staff in the same team, yeah, I had that. So like I appreciated someone that just retires and then sort of leaves that space altogether. Like it would be hard, man. It would mm. be hard. And then like to see something like yesterday and like you said, like walking across the street, I seen Randy, I was like, see, yeah, yeah. Like a <laughs> yeah, few yeah, different yeah, people yeah. that yeah. you're just like, all right, cool, this is sort of getting that um, that feel that you used to have. But, yeah, I, um, I'm i definitely going to experience it a lot more now that I sort of stepped away from yeah. the club and um, diving in with you boys at the RPA. I'm looking forward to yeah. sort of getting into the new space, but um, I'm sure that's going to hit me pretty hard over the next little bit. So that's why, like, even the last couple of sessions that we've done, like, I'm it's given me that bug again to sort of get back into, like, a group environment yeah. and get back around that training, that lifestyle um, piece that we sort of miss as as retired athletes. Low key, so pumped he jumped on board, but that'll be, mm. <laughs> I, I like, it's like, you know, when, um, you know, when like time goes, like everyone's busy. Yeah. Like mm. everyone will go through and, and you know, they've got their own lives, they've got their own families. But I feel like, I don't know, the last couple of weeks, I've like, done a couple of training sessions, like got a yeah. little run in this morning. I just feel like this is like the start of like the new, like kind of like the new chapter. Yeah. For sure. How, yeah. You, how are you feeling about um, jumping on board with the RPA? How did that come about? Um, yeah. So, it's something that's been on the cards for a long time, I suppose. And it's funny, like we obviously sort of sat down like this a while ago, um, 16 months or so ago. And then you showed me that clip this morning of what was said. And it was like me talking about Tommy. So just preface, um, this isn't our first, for those who are listening, this, yeah. is, this, is, this actually <laughs> this isn't is our first podcast. <laughs> this is attempt to, when I, when I first started, like just for context for crew who are listening, um, when I <laughs> just feel like, what, what do you mean you said it? Like we, um, we sat down, what was it, like 16 months ago when I first yeah. thought like I wanted to do the potty. I was like, I'll record four crew who I love and just will have like amazing stories. So it was like you, Mac Horton, Ali Day and Jamie Chapman. Um, Ali's and Max went live. So they were mm. episode one and two. Um, yours didn't go live because... It was like because I was average. No, <laughs> not at all, man. <laughs> no, I, I like I listened back to our chat last night. I loved yeah. it, but it was like it was we couldn't upload it because there was a gap between um when it was going to be released. Yeah. It and was it, like six months between or something. Man. It was like when you and you were talking about like you were right in the thick of it with your knee, and then at that point, I think you'd like maybe announce your medical retirement. So it was just like it wasn't relevant. Like we couldn't, yeah, yeah. we couldn't air it. No, no. Um, but it was cool to hear like the little clips, like going back and like having a look at the clips that like you're talking about Tommy and catching up about Tommy Simons and, yeah. and how that whole thing came. Yeah, yeah. So that was cool to see that, and like I didn't even remember. I remember that what happened. And so in the clip, I say um, it was like the week after my injury. Tommy rang me. I was already a delegate, and I was working with the RPA in that space, but he sort of rang me and just checking in with my knee and everything. And then he's like, mate, time on your hands, dive into our space, see where it goes. Like pretty much caught a work experience at the time. He's like, actually do more than the, mm. um, than you've been doing and more than the, the normal delegate space. So, um, it's cool to see that sort of blossom. And then my re relationship with Tommy obviously blossomed and he, the help he's given me through the injury from obviously then to now. Um, and then, probably six months ago chatting through retirement and like thinking about maybe um, pursuing something down the space. And then I wasn't ready for that. So mm. like, I think at the time, like I had the position with the Titans and I wanted to stay in the team and I wanted to keep doing what I was doing or stay with, stay in the comforts, I suppose. Also, I wasn't a, nice, ready. also a nice transition. Like you're mm. still like around the boys. Like that's good. That's a cool transition, man. Yeah, I was very lucky. And I knew that. And I knew that like I was in a, a lucky position that not many retiring athletes get. Um, 
So yeah, I was just like, no, nah, the timing wasn't right. So the last six months I've been at the club, loved it. Like obviously um, so thankful for what they, mm. sort of position they gave me and, and what I've done over the last six months. But it's probably been the last six or so weeks where I've started to feel like I'm on the same schedule I was as a player, mm. same crew. My, my desk was like in the players' lounge. So I was with all the boys constantly. Yeah, you, like, get, you getting much work done in there? Yeah, <laughs> the boys sometime. coming in there? <laughs> They're looking over my shoulder like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm trying to work. But um, <laughs> yeah. no, nah, so everything just sort of felt the same. And I think it was a really nice ease out of, out of playing. Mm. And then I've sort of had that feel of, all right, this, it might be time for something new. And then um, it was funny, I sort of on a Friday – was thinking to myself, I went, maybe I should have pursued that conversation that I had six months ago with the RPA. Mm. Jamie rings me on the Monday and we'll sort of, yeah, it just all spiraled from there. And then, yeah, started on Tuesday. So it's, it's, it's a space that I'm so passionate about knowing the fact or knowing what they've done for me over the last 16 months, especially mm. since my, or it's longer, it's crazy how quick time goes, but yeah. 20 odd months since my knee um, and where sort of I've grown as a person and the co- contribution that they've had through that um, time, like now I can sort of see that as I can have impact like that. Hopefully yeah. not in the same manner. I don't want anyone to obviously hurt yeah. themselves and yeah. have to medically retire and do all that process that I went through because it was a hard road and I don't wish it on anyone. But in other ways that sort of I can have impact on the players and, and um, yeah, it's just an exciting space. And obviously yourself and, and Tommy in the, in the past player program, like that's – doing amazing things and then Jamie's looking after me. It's like, yeah, it's an exciting time for me, man. And I felt like the timing yeah. sort of, it wasn't right straight out of retirement, but now I feel like I'm sort of pushing into that space where it just felt, it feels good. Feels and, we're, right. and we're on the Goldie, the, the crew on the Goldie. The Northern Charter. It, 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 mate, it's beautiful. What do you think, um, what do you think excites you most about the role? Probably that impact piece impact, of yeah. what, what I felt and how I've transitioned out of, out of the game, even when I was still playing, um, but yeah, just to ha- just to be there for the players because obviously the game is such a result base. Like it's just it's all highs and lows. It's a roller coaster. Res- it's yeah. a roller coaster. Whether you're winning or losing, it's a roller coaster. And there's so many highs and lows, and there's so many um, factors to it all. And like I'm just looking forward to being there for the players mm. and like being yeah, just giving that support in any way possible. And um, yeah, I feel like it can have impact to to people I care about and then obviously I care about all the players. So then, um, yeah, it's pretty cool to be able to do something and yeah. Well, man, I was the same. I was the same. You'd, yeah. Mate, you'd like, know it. I was, know I was the exact same. And I feel like people who are advocates for certain spaces or who are passionate for certain spaces, like they've got a personal experience mm. behind it. Like, yeah. Medically retired, like a couple of medical yeah. retired athletes in here. Um, but I was the exact same, man. Like I was, I wanted to be able to create genuine impact in whatever field mm. I wanted to do. And that's why I wanted to go down and study psych. That's why this podcast is a thing. And then mm. um, the experience piece is the RLPA and, and having genuine impact on players. Like I look at the session that we did yesterday where we had 15, 20 like past players just come together. We did a solid little sesh, probably a little bit more solid than I thought it yeah, was going to be. Yeah. <laughs> and then we it's rolled into Brecky and I was like, that's so cool. Even I was talking to Greg Bird um, afterwards and he's just like, man, you should get like, the older, older boys to come in, not those guys who retired in the last 10 years, but, mm. but everyone else was like, man, we like, we would love that. Like yeah. that, that's our goal is to slowly build. And it's just a time thing. Yeah. But I think when you can make, when you can, for me, I'm, I'm keen to heal for it, but like for me, if I can make genuine impact and then like make a living out of it or be able to live off it, then that's the dream. Like that's the golden ticket. Without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. And that's like, yeah, it's just so appealing. It's hard to even say. It's like I, what I've felt I want to give. Yeah. Like, and like the help that I've received and the way I've been able to grow. It's like I, I want to be able to have that impact, like mm. you said. And, and um, we're definitely in a space to do it. So, um, although it's sad to leave a team environment because it's like I love footy at the end of the day and I, I wish I was still playing like all of that. But sliding door moments, we'll talk about it on the run. Like, there's been a lot of moments that have led to this and I feel like you know when something's right and I feel like it's right for me to sort of, yeah, give that that help where I can and um, support and, and do that. I just feel like it's, it's a feeling that's right, you know. I think, yeah, well, you got to lead into like those gut experiences, yeah. And, mate, you you touched on the injury. We've, we've talked about how we're both, both a couple of medical <laughs> retired like, NRL yeah, players. Mate. I, I do I do want to lean into that piece because I know it's a big part of your story, mm. yeah. Um, how, um, 
where where do you think is a fitting fitting place to start? Like, is it because we, we've had, we've obviously had this conversation before, but I do want to give preface for for the crew who are listening because you were medically retired, blew out your knee. How firstly, what happened? Like, what what was the game and how did it all come about? Okay, so what happened was my body just didn't love the fact that my mind wanted to be a football player. I don't think because yeah. like I think I think I worked it out like from age of 19, 20, I only played like 50 odd games till I was 26, 27. And that's like cut everything. So you were all just in, so all just, in, just a lot of, a lot of injuries, but then there was a COVID year that like no one really played yeah. and like things like that. So like for how much footy I actually played, my body didn't hold up that well, really. Cause what, what did you have? Cause you had the, you had an ACL prior so to a few shoulders. I've had three surgeries on each knee or four on one, three on the other two shoulders couple fingers, nose. Um, Busted yeah, cheek is a nice cheek, yeah, a couple the there. Um, so I think I've had like 12, 12 surgeries or something already and I've got a couple in the works or, for this year. So like the body for not playing much footy just didn't love it. So it sort of started there. It's a brutal, brutal game. Brutal man. game. And this was my good knee that, yeah. I, that I had. So now we're down in Melbourne and just, man, cover tackle just went wrong. Sort of put – I planted – um, someone's body weight fell into it and it just sort of collapsed, man. It was um, pretty brutal footage. It's yeah. funny, like, I can't watch – people watch videos of people getting injuries or, like, doing dumb shit and hurting themselves. Like, I always hate watching that stuff. Yeah. But mine's, like, pretty gr- gruesome to watch and <laughs> I couldn't watch it all day. Really? It's weird. It's so like, you've gone because back it's you... my own body, yeah. I don't know if it, like, in my mind it works different, but I can watch that that clip. It's, it's a weird feeling, but – yeah, so I've, I've fully blew it out. Pretty much did everything that there is to do. Broke, broke, um, broke the leg, meniscus, um, all the CLs, everything. Um, so yeah, it was pretty brutal um, at the time. And then that next couple of months was fucking a spin. Before we go into that, take me back to the moment of it, of when it actually happened. Like, did you? So did you know straight away that it was yeah. a, it was a big injury? It was it was funny because I I fell under my front and it was against Melbourne and it was my first time back in Melbourne. Old team. I'd been there the year before or like I'd only left the year before, so they were all still my mates. Um, and I remember Harry was the first one I think to put his hand on my my back and because I fell under my front and my my knee was still sort of like sideways and then I like I was like screaming. Yeah, I I was just like fuck, rolled onto my back. As I rolled, I just felt it like fall, sort of fall in and I laid there and they came over and no one else really seen it. Mm. I think Harry did maybe, but I, I should ask him. I've never actually asked him. I was talking on the phone the other day. Should, should have called him before this party. <laughs> yeah. Get a couple of bit of um, Whether he actually understood what it was because for the first 20 minutes, like I was the only one that really understood. Like mm. I was I had an argument with the doc, everything, because I was laying there. I was about 12 metres from the, de- the dead ball line and they're just like, just hop up, like, we'll just go off the back of the field. I'm like, man, my leg was sideways. Like mm. it was like, and they're just like, oh, we'll just walk off. So I'm walking down this, the um, sideline, like obviously not walking, but yeah. hobbling. And I was like, fellas, my leg was sideways. This is bad. Like arguing with them. And I remember I looked up to the big screen and there's, it's funny, there's a photo of it and I'm like, arm around, I'm putting my thumb up. Yeah. Cause I see myself in the big screen and I'm like, have like this sideways look on my face and you can see it in my face. Like I know, yeah, I know what's just going on. Yeah. And I thumbed up cause I was like, just I'll be sweet. Dude, I'll be sweet. Yeah. But the doc came over and he's like, I'm like, man, I shouldn't be walking. Like go watch the fucking footage, like screamed at you. Yeah. So he's gone and watched the footage. I've walked around the sideline. They've put me on the Medicab. There's no keys to the Medicab. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, we don't have the keys. I'm like, fuck, what is going on here? This and then the doc came over and he's like, stop walking, like, no more walking, like, we'll get you the wheelchair. Because he'd gone and seen the footage and, like, mm. the footage obviously shows yeah. what happened. So that for that first, like, 15, 20 minutes, like, I felt like I was, like, in this weird place where I knew, so, like, almost it was the end. I wouldn't say I knew it was the end, but I knew it was really, really bad. Yeah. And no one else around me was really reacting in that manner. It was just like, oh, no, we'll just You'll go over right, here. Yeah. Like, let's get over here. And I'm like, man, this is this is bad. So it was a bit of a spin out. But then Geordie Grant, Bonson Garlic, two of my good mates that I'd sort of known for a very long time, weren't playing for Melbourne that day, but were at the game. Um, obviously, when you tra- travel as the Titans, everyone that's travelled is on deck for the game. Yep. So like... They've got a scan place in the in the stadium down there at Amy Park. 
So they put me in a wheelchair and Bronson and Geordie are just like, fuck, we'll look after you. We'll come with you. So yeah. they took me into the so into good, the man. Titan sheds. They were in our sheds, showered, <laughs> helped me shower and yeah. everything. Went and got a scan, came back with like- Straight away? Straight away. Yeah. During the game. So they, they just like, like, yep, we'll take over. So I was just with them and they were, it was cool to just be around. Like they're good mates of mine. So mm. it was like pretty settling. Um, and then got out with like four minutes to go in the game, watch the last couple of so minutes. So you've, you've been, you've gone in, you've got a scan and you've still got four minutes left of the game. Yeah. So it was in like the first 10 minutes that I did it. Far out, yeah. And like everyone was just focused on the game. So like um, I was off doing this, the scan and, and sort of going through it while everyone was still focusing on the game. And the boys nearly won the game. It was crazy because you don't really go down to Melbourne and, to and usually do that well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, unless you're, yeah, there's not many teams, no team really does that. So yeah. Um, the boys ended up having a good game and then, uh, yeah, came back. And then I was on crutches on the field catching up with everyone from the Melbourne team. They're like, oh, how is it? And I'm like, oh, it's probably not good. Don't know. Mm-hmm. Like at that stage, obviously didn't know. Yeah. But by that stage, like my leg had ballooned. I just wanted to get back to the hotel, lay down. Yeah. Um, but then we had a promo, so we went and sat and like did a signing session. You, and you went as well? I went as well, no, yeah. I went and sat there like on the edge of the table with my leg up. And um, I'm going like, nah, get me home. Yeah. After like, yeah, I shouldn't have gone. You probably I should, have, gotta, I should have just went to put the leg up, but I was like, no, nah, I'll come. Yeah. I'll come for a little bit. And then after a while, I was like, I'm going to get myself a cab out of here. But I, I stayed. It was, it was a weird, it was probably better that I stayed with the group because yeah. I ended up laying in bed solo, like sort of looking at the roof all night. It was a, it was a, a long night, that one. Did you have a roommate? Not that night. Single. That's, that's unusual, yeah. Well, I didn't have a roommate. Because usually you would always have a roomie in there. Maybe someone. Maybe you're there. The boys went out that night. Yeah. So that, <laughs> maybe. We'll keep that one Because I was, I was laying up all night and I, <laughs> I was like, do you reckon I'm up to it? Because I was seeing the group chat go off. I'm like, uh, they're having a good night and I'm laying in bed like sour as hell. Yeah. But I think whoever I was with must have ditched the room yeah, and yeah, given yeah. it to me sort of thing to just be in peace. Have but, some time, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that would, night, that night was a spin out. I would have thought they would have done like um, morphine, uh, green whistle or something. Oh, yeah, they? I pumped two. Oh, I, 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 <laughs> they gave me one whistle. I pocketed it and I said, oh, can I have a whistle? <laughs> so I, <laughs> tricks of the chase. So um, but I needed it. I was like, fuck. After the first 20 minutes of worn off and like everyone else started, once the doc had seen that footage and I seen in his face, like he'd seen the, he didn't, I was like, how did it look? And he's like, no, no, no more walking. Yeah. I was like, that sold it to me. I'm like, yeah something's bad here and then um then i think that rested my body a little bit i suppose and then that's when like i started aching and then i was yeah, yeah chilling chilling painkillers and so and got through i was a bit yeah so what when did you the flight was horrible because i i was scared of pain on the flight but i ate too many painkillers yeah. oh not too many, like i didn't yeah. eat a thousand but yeah. i had a couple extra than the um prescription and i ended up like Just, spewing and shit because i was like had too many of them. Just because you were nervous? Because I was flight. nervous for the flight. Man. And they got me in the front row, but it was a full flight. So I, like they swapped me with someone, but I was like <laughs> next to public because the boys were obviously at a section that, wherever they were. Yeah. I was next to this old fella, legend bloke. Yeah. But I'm sitting there like leg like this in like the worst couple of hours ever. And he's just, Chewing just <laughs> asking me like, what do I do? What do you like? Just plain chat. And yeah. I'm like, usually I'll be okay with it. But I was just like, I'd never said it, but I was almost going to be like, mate, I need to just be in my thoughts here. I just yeah. need to focus on this. Like, <laughs> yeah. It was tough, but yeah, yeah. It, was, it meant well. The old fella. But so when did you, when did you get the result? Like when did the doc tell you the scans or when you find out the actual result? So that, that first night, I probably could have just sat and watched the game because I didn't get much out of it because it, it swelled up straight away. But mm. um, pretty much in the next couple of days, I think I was surgery two, three days. So that was a Saturday night. I think I was surgery Monday or Tuesday, mm. uh, probably Tuesday. So did you sit down with the doc and, and the doc said, hey, you did ACL, MCL, PCL, yeah, the whole, the whole yeah, thing? Yeah, they, so he broke it all down, come up with a plan. So usually they would go ACL and meniscus and then MCL later, this and that. Or like, I can't even remember what it was. It's a long time now. But he is like, I want to do it differently. Um, so he, he staged it different. So he started with the MCL and worked in yeah. um, whatever that means. And then... Yeah, so he fixed that and then the ACL wasn't for like 13 weeks later. Mm. Um, I think it was there about 13 weeks. So I'd been on crutches for I think 12 weeks and then I had a week off and then I was on for another 
eight, I think. Yeah. Because both times they were meniscus work. So it's like a lot of non weight bearing. Mm. So it was like over six, I think it was 16, 17 weeks with like a few days in between yeah. of crutches. Um, but that initial stage, man, it was, it was pretty tough. Eh? Like I've had injuries and I've had surgeries and things like, um, but it was, it was brutal. Like I didn't really leave the house for like fucking three, four weeks. And, um, I remember I went to dinner with some mates and I, they said to me later on, they didn't say it in the moment, but like you were looking grim in the face, like really bit sickly and that. So it was pretty brutal. What do you, what do you think about? Like what, like where did your head go when you, are you at home? You didn't want to leave. Like? The first two weeks I, I sat in it and I was pretty, pretty devastated to be honest. Like it was, um, it was a brutal ride. My partner was super, like literally just dropped everything. And she started like, the, I'm just starting RLPA and I feel like the last week's been busy and like weird, but she'd started a job like, the day that I had surgery was her. She started this new job, mm. big role. Um, and luckily her boss at, the, um, at that company, he liked footy. So he knew what had happened and he allowed her to like help mm. me a lot. But yeah, so she was like busy at work, but like baby and me and like doing all that. So that was like, yeah, a cool. Like a, if I didn't have her, it would have been a harder ride. Yeah, man. But yeah, that first month was, um, it was weird. It was like really low, but then really, it turned around pretty quick. I don't, I still don't even know how I sort of spun it around in my own head so quick, but um, Tom, I, like there was three conversations and I've I sort of said it in that first one that really just spun, spun me in full circle. What and were I they? Sort of, the first one was, um, uh, Sam Madden, he's a physio at the time at the mm-hmm. Titans rang me and I didn't like the, I was, cause I was off contract. So I was like, fuck, I'm going to have to get a job after this. Like I'm not going to get re-signed now. I was in, in talks to to re-sign a new contract for a couple of years and it was like the best run of games I'd had. So I was like, oh, that's off the table. So I was looking at um, what's next sort of thing there. Um, but he's like, he rang me, he's like, have a look at some coaching stuff with the club. Like I think you'd do that well in that. Like dive into a new space, give them more reason to keep you around. Mm. And like that was just a good conversation where I'd never thought of anything coaching wise. Um, but I was like, yeah, you know, like – more looking at, at the time, it's more reason for him to keep me around if I'm helping with the academies or that and then I can still do my rehab and mm. still whatever, whatever. But that triggered something that I obviously then pursued and then I, went, I did Burley Mal Meninga and then I jumped in with the girls, which mm. was like an unreal space. So that grew from that conversation. Um, I think it was like the day after Tommy, like I alluded to. Tommy he Simons. Called, Tommy Simons. One of the great men. One of the great. He rang me and goes – man, dive into our space, like obviously checking in and, and feeling for it. But he's like, dive into our space. Like, like I'll sort of, I'll work with you. It was CBA time at that stage. It was meant to be finishing soon. And like, it was at the business end of yeah. the CBA. Um, I think it was, yeah. Cause I did it September, no August. And, um, so it, was, it ended up lasting a fair bit longer than that. But, um, yeah. And then, so there was those two. So it was just like, two doors open as one was closing. Mm. And then the club obviously rang me um, and said, Hey, we'll give you a playing contract for next year. Like we'll let you try and get back to playing. So it was like a new door with a coaching space. I was still going to be playing. Um, I was contracted to, to do my rehab and get mm. back to playing. And then obviously the RLPA door. So it was just like, I think that was in the second week and I just sat there and I, it was like back to back to back. Mm. And I clearly remember sitting there going, three doors just open for me. Yeah, man. I can't sit here and be sour. Like I was just like kicking myself. I'm like, and at the time I was kicking myself for the two weeks prior that I was sitting there like being upset and being yeah. sour, which now I'm like, no, you got to sit in that. Like, Do you it think was, it's a, it's probably a morning thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like and you're still processing all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like that's not something you can just like jump into the next thing straight away. Yeah. Nah. And I'm not saying like that was just complete circle i didn't look back and i wasn't sad again like it was i was definitely a wave over the last 20 months has been a, a whirlwind with what's going on but yeah those three things that happened in that three four day stretch just like fully spun me and i was like all right now it's on to the next like yeah. let's dive in and i probably dove in a bit off more than dove more into the study and i was doing so much i sort of over over committed myself more, more busy a than bit. when you're playing footy way more like <laughs> yeah. way more but i wouldn't be here with this new gig, if I didn't dive in the RLPA, I coached the women's NRW and we mm. were in the grand final. And then like so much came from it. The, the 12 months that came, I've said it before, I'm like, 
the injury was I'll never say it was a good thing because it, it cost cost me my footy mm. um and things were going well and it was it was it would never be a good thing but so much has good, good has come from it yeah that I can't I can't be upset about it like now that now I'm sitting where I'm sitting and I'm feeling how I'm feeling yeah I can't be upset that it happened because there's so much that's come from it and then like got engaged got a house like a, so much things that have come from that I don't I'm not saying that's yeah, those two probably no, no, maybe no. would have happened but like yeah. a lot of other things it's just like there's been a lot of good in the last 20 months since it happened so it's like the worst night turned into the best 20 months. Like you can't really. Man, I think about that all the time. It's like some of, our, some of our hardest times or some of the, like the worst things that have happened to us leads to sometimes being the best things that mm. they could happen. And like, just to be honest, man, you're still only fresh. Like you're only fresh out. Like mm. it's, and there's so much fun, like cool opportunities that are going to pop up. But I think we, we caught up maybe after the second surgery, like from yeah. memory, the first one, um, your body didn't react to the surgery that well, but the second one w- was good. Mm. Um, and we caught up, um, I think at barefoot in, yeah, in yeah. Karma. and you were looking good and your whole mindset was like, what's next? Like you were talking about the RPA, you were talking about like coaching with the tie and you were talking about all these things. And I was like, man, I've got so much respect for you because you were like, I, there's, I can't kick stones. Like, how do I kick stones when like, just mm. fin- like I'm, going through it and I've got all these opportunities to jump into. Like that's such a cool mindset. Do you reckon, do you think you've always been like that or do you reckon that's a learnt skill? It's definitely a learnt skill. Yeah. I think, I think I learned that along the way. And like, like I said before, I had, had um, <laughs> practice, I suppose, through injuries and, and hardships that um, throughout my career, like I had times like that. So there was a time I did an ACL where I sort of like didn't dive into coaching, but looked at the, tried to look at the game as a coach would and then I came back and I was playing way better footy and I'm like well that helped me like yeah. and I, I seen little things through injuries where like I'd, I would do something and then I'd see the effect of it and I'd be like all right now I've got to keep that or like now I've got to implement that and I looked at it as like yeah I'm not doing what I'm doing but trying to better myself in that time which I didn't do early on that was like each time I was like I'd do something and I'd get better. Like I looked at the game. I was mm. like, I'm going to watch each game as I'm coaching it. Mm. Not actually sitting with the coaches or anything, but I was just watching that. And then when I came back, I was playing way better footy. I'm like, well, doing something like that allowed me to like be better and sort of grow. And then mm. I sort of just built that um, resilience over time, I suppose. But um, it was definitely a mindset thing. And I don't even know how, like I've just always been quite driven in that. Yeah, um, yeah I didn't dwell on things. And I've seen... Um, the negative impacts of when people don't, don't react well to things or yeah. like they let themselves go downwards and it's like, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of where things can go if you don't um, react well or right or not right's not the right word, but if you don't react in a certain way to mm-hmm. things, I, th- I think I've, um, yeah, watch, watched um, mates go down and I was always like, no, nah, I'm staying up. I wonder and how. I'll bring, I wanted to, yeah, help. I wonder how you. That. I wonder how you catch yourself in those in those moments because we've seen it. Like we've seen guys mm. who like same thing. Like it might be an injury, it might be marriage breakdown, it might be drinking, drug, whatever it is. Mm. I wonder what it is in terms of like being able to catch yourself because you talked about catching yourself. Like I'm the same. Like caught like caught myself after like getting medically retired from footy. Like I was like, but it could go either way. I wonder. 100%. I wonder what the difference is between the crew who like just will spiral and like being in the past player space now, like you see, you see guys who struggle, like mm. transitioning out, transitioning out of footy is tough regard or even professional sport, or even you look at the corporate athlete changing um, different careers. Like it's always going to be different, but I just wonder what it is. The guys who do it well, catch themselves early. Is it, I wonder if it's like a friend pulling you in or the it's, conversations that you have. Yeah. Well, I, th- I definitely think it's learned. Like no one, yeah, some might just naturally just go the, go the way where they pull catch themselves and and can get out of it but like um like i spent i've seen people not catch themselves Mm. and i think like i said it was learned like i was like all right i know little things that happened there that i would do differently and i helped um friends get out of spaces um like yeah it's a learned thing i suppose it's hard to i don't know i don't actually know but um i was lucky enough where i sort of had seen seen enough to yeah really catch myself and then and push forward and um yeah it's, it's a, re- a weird one it's weird but it, it's um yeah to round it out how is the knee 
How are you feeling now? Because, bro, I'm you good. did twelve. You did twelve clicks this morning. You're we flying. We're moving. We're <laughs> yeah. moving very slow clicks. <laughs> well, yeah, we're doing six minute paces. I think we're we're rolling in. But um, how is it? It's yeah, much better, much better. I I struggled last year was average, mm. um, at best, and then I had surgery a couple weeks before Chrissy. Um, that has yeah put me in a place where I'm feeling miles better. Um, obviously we've done the few, few workouts with you, um you guys the last week ran today ran slowly but still running and like a couple weeks before that surgery i was just like had this feeling i'm like no nah, i'm just been i need to run yeah. like I've, i just felt like a bit unfair like yeah. i'd been like i said partying and enjoying retirement and i had a bunch of weddings i was like i need to feel fitter like mm -hmm. i'm going for a run did like 2k me blew up felt aching i was like yeah. oh, i can't even do that um had the surgery and then obviously we're ticking over yeah into um double digit k's today um i'm not gonna lie bro i didn't think you'd be running at all like even did with I. your knee I, did, I after you did it, i was like no way we're doing a five kilometer run let alone a 12k run yeah i, I really didn't and like like all of last year i was like <laughs> i'd do blue shirt for the girls and i would, I would have painkillers because <laughs> i was like <laughs> Some, a couple uh, any like, inflams. yeah any inflams <laughs> and that because my knee would like blah, and i had this weird feeling and i was so nervous for it all year i'm like I'm going to injure myself out there running water oh. and I'm going to hold the game up. <laughs> Imagine me getting <laughs> strapped on the field. The medicats actually medicats working. The medicats coming out. <laughs> For me, running water, I was yeah, just man. like, nah, surely not. I had this weird feeling that it may happen. But um, like even that, I, I would just be running water for the girls and it was, um, yeah, it was a struggle. Like I wasn't, I wasn't moving well at all. So this surgery has done me, done me wonders. So yeah. it's, it's, um, it's in a way better spot. So I'm, I'm, uh, loving like you, like we said at the start like that community aspect of training again feeling fitter feeling healthier um yeah it's Tra just training good space training with league. crew is like the best thing ever mm. it's like my i think it's my favorite thing ever at the moment yeah yeah getting around like and especially because <clears throat> now like you're bit like we're busy like it, 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 there's a lot going on mm. but being able to i guess like stack certain things so if you are going to do a session do it with a mate mm. Go for a run, bring a mate along, or go for a cycle, bring a mate along. Like yeah. even the session at Legacy, um, with Alex Glenn, shout out to Legacy, like such a sick crew, and sick crew. It just go in there and just bring crew. Like it's so fun, man. It was, yeah, and there was like the classes buzzing, and even not our crew, like not the play the ex players, like the other um people that were in that class, those classes were like they were buzzing with us. We were, we had a couple in our group that were giving us energy. I'm like, oh yeah, this is this is mad. Where I've been sitting lifting weights and doing stuff solo i'm like yeah. no nah, i gotta get back into a you know a group space probably probably a bit of both mm. um brother in in lead up um, i know you know in lead up to the conversations i usually bring a couple mates um or family members uh just to get like a little bit of background on on i don't know just certain funny stories or certain things um i caught i caught, I caught, I caught nico last night <laughs> Yeah, where's this guy? He was um he was, yeah, it's all PG, man. He was actually at a dinner. He's like, I'll call you back after. And I was like, man, are you you want a date? He's just like, no, I was out with Toby and the boys. He wasn't on a date. <laughs> no, he wasn't. Oh, maybe, I don't know. Maybe just maybe he's lying to me. Um, but I was like, what do you got for me? He's just like, I still hold a grudge. He's like, tell Boothie on the podcast that I still still hold a grudge and he'll know what I'm talking about. I know what he's talking about. <laughs> What's he talking about? Is his debut? Yeah, it's his debut. Debut. You missed the debut? You missed I the missed debut? his debut. Far out, man. There was reason. And like, he, mate, I went to his Aussie debut last <laughs> year. And yeah, I yeah. nearly, no, nah, I didn't nearly not go that. But I was like, as soon as he made that squad, I said, oh, Ash, I'm like, wherever the game is that he plays, yeah. I have to go. Because if I missed that as well, yeah, he'd never let me lift it down. Yeah. No, because he, he debuted on a Sunday Arvo in, on the Central Coast. So there's no flights in and out. I was in, um, I was in Brizzy, and I um, I just had my leg, so I wasn't playing cups. So I wasn't making money. Yeah, and um, I couldn't work because I was on crutches, and I so I, I was just didn't have cash, and I was like, I can't come. I started a new job. I would I wasn't starting a job, but I was doing something the next day where I was getting some cash money. Yeah, and um. I was like, man, I can't. I've got to get some money. He's like, I'll pay for your fly this and that. And I didn't go. I, and it is a huge regret of mine. Because oh, like, really? it was oh, it was his hometown. You've probably seen footage. Like, it was a pretty special moment. Mm. And I should have been there. Like, because where we'd been those few years before. And I sort of alluded to, I sort of seen people at their worst. And, like, I was 
with Nico through, he's been on the podcast, so people would have heard his story, obviously. And mm. um, he's a, such a legend for being so open about his experiences. And like, that was one where I seen him at his worst. I lived with him and yeah. like, man, there were some wild times there where it was, it was dark, dark. <clears throat> so I seen things there and that was in those years leading up to it. And we were, yeah, I should have been there. So I do regret it. And I apologize, Nick, <laughs> I'm saying it publicly now. And I've, I say, I say so to him all the time. You'd think he'd get over a little bit, but he's still bringing it up in this setting. Like, I've apologized a thousand times, but I should have been there. I think, like, I don't know. He, and it's, he, um, he was, he was taking, he was yeah, taking, I know. but, and also what he said, but, um, he also said someone that he looked, like, you're someone that he looks up to immensely. So much love. Like, you're, like, incredibly loyal. Like, the biggest thing that he said was, um, He's like, no matter what you've got going on in your life, you'll always check in with your mates. Mm. He's like, always. And, you know, Nico, like Nico's obviously been on the podcast. Like he's spoken about how he's been in the dark stage. And I said to him last night, I was like, what, well, what's one of the biggest things that, um, I guess that have helped or what's one of the biggest things that like, I don't know, you've got, got out of booth. He's like, well, he saved my life. Mm. That's what he said. It's just like, he saved my life. Man. It's, um, it's still crazy to think about. And like, yeah, I'm not saying I saved his life. He saved his own life, but it was it was bad there, man. Like real bad, and like it was it was a, a stretch. And like when we were in Mackay, there was one one day where I like we've spoken about it, and he's alluded to it. But I was working, and um, I was at a, a client lunch, and he rang me, and I stepped aside, and he was like really upset, and um, he's just like not saying anything. Like he's gonna end it, end it and shit. But he's like, he was really crying, and he's like, oh, I can't do it, man. It's like, and he hung up, and I couldn't get him back on the phone, and I just had this sick feeling. Of, it didn't say that he was gonna do anything, yeah. but I had this sick feeling in my gut, and I just like ran up to the counter, paid paid lunch, sprinted to my car, and just raced home because I couldn't get him on the blower. Mm. And I was like walking up to that door, and it was like, fuck, I don't know, I don't know what I was gonna walk into. <sighs> I walked happened. in, and I like, and he's spoken about the the depths of it, but he was laying on the floor in the kitchen crying, like just laying there. And I was just like, this is like, this is not sweet. And then, um, that was the, that was the, the worst that we've seen. Of what, it. What do you, but like, what do you it, that was like me opening that door. I was like, I had fear in my guts. Like it was bad. So like, it was, a, it was a moment where I was just like, fuck, this isn't sweet. So then that was when we really started pushing to change things. And, um, but what do you say? Uh, like, what, like, what do you do in that moment? Is it just a matter about just being, being there, man, I suppose. And like, it, yeah, words are. It's often not words. I feel that uh, are the most comforting. It's more just presence. I think the most comforting things when, when there's hard times, it's not sitting there like even with my leg. It was like nothing Aisha said was helping or whatever. But she was just laying next to me, I suppose, and mm -hmm. being that presence. And then, so when I did my leg, it, Nico obviously repaying the favor, and this is the person he is. Like he flew up a couple of days later took a day off training and asked yeah. Fitz, like Fitzy to, hey, I need to go check on my mate. Um, I sure went and picked him up. I didn't know. Then he walked in the door. Then he just spent the night, flew back the next morning, Man. went to training that day. Like, so he missed the day training. Like, but nothing he said to me that night really did anything. It was yeah. just the presence and it was more than just being there. So a lot of the, what I did with Nico was, was that. Like I left that lunch and I raced to the, the house and I don't think I went back to work that either or – um, yeah, no and words, I suppose, but yeah, we've been, we've been through some things together and he's, fuck, he's an incredible human. And the best thing now is like, he's speaking to it. He speaks to it. He allows that to impact others. And like, I know how much impact he has in the community with what he does in, mm. with the mental health space and you and him are leading the front, I suppose, in, in our, in our game that it's just like, yeah, it's incredible. I think the, f even mate. Even the fact of you coming on, even the fact of like anyone just being able to be open and vulnerable about their own experiences. And it's, it's a whole spectrum, right? Like mental health is, it's the whole thing. Like it, it, it could be the deepest, darkest things, but it could be struggling with identity. It could be, you know, leaving a certain job. It might be struggling with certain relations. It's the whole thing. Like, and, I've, and Nico talked about it in his podcast, where he's like, when he did, um, when they were doing uh, the the hardships or uh, in COVID with the Melbourne mm. storm, where everyone was talking about like we were in the bubble, people were struggling, and then they talked about what was going on. He said some guys were 
I think nervous to share because they're like, oh, well, my thing isn't as hard or as, as bad as the mm. other boys. And Nico's like, nah. I was like, that's, he's like, that's the hardest thing like that you're going through. Don't, don't shy away from the fact that it, it's hard. Like it's hard for you. And, and, and it's not like, it's not comparing hardness. It's not comparing hardness, man. Yeah, like yeah. every, everyone's got their own, own hard thing. And the fact of like crew coming on now and being able to just like share, I think it, it validates what other people are thinking where it's like, well, if you or if Nico or if anyone else can like talk about their own shows, then it makes it okay for everyone else. And then the compounding conversations that are going to have in the community, like out in the, like even at, um, at Justin Lane at the Alfred's party uh, last on Sunday, um, just the conversations that happen there. Like it just, I don't know what it is. I, maybe it's because like I'm in the space a little bit more and people are willing to talk about it a little bit more, but I see it changing. Like I, mm. I see these conversations changing and like you guys are leading the front. It is. It's like, and it needs to, like, well, you guys are leading the front and you can't, like, Mate, you're, take the like. Well you, were, well, you were there with, for Nick, like, you were the guy for Nico. Like, you were, like, you're that guy mm. and you had the awareness just to be there for him. Huge, man. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. It is a changing space and it needs to change. It, it's, it's so important, man, because, like, like you said, it's just, like, no one should be comparing hard. You should just be able to mm. be open to what you're experiencing and then, if you need help, get the help. If you don't need help, get through it, push through it and work through it. But shouldn't be fearful of saying something because oh, they've got it worse or this and yeah. that. Like it's just, it's just, that's a never ending cycle. Like, yeah. And it's a changing space, like you said. Uh, and it's, um, it's exciting because no one should be feeling in the dumps and like, yeah. It, and it's a wave, but well, let's keep riding it. Well, it was even like this morning when we we're going, going on that run this morning, it was just like, obviously talking about like we just naturally like talk about like what's going on yeah and you're like mate it's funny like as soon as i was able to share and other people would be able to talk to me about what they're going through like similar situations it may like it makes you feel better like it, yeah. ju it just validates it man i don't know what yeah. it is about it but it just automatically makes you feel better yeah and like even like nico's story or anyone's story if you hold on to it no one can learn from it but if you share it then everyone's learning like we mm. just like you just said man it's so so clear like if you don't know, you don't know. Right. And if you do know, then you can take traits or take what, what they have done and, and really learn and, and move forward with it. But yeah, it's, um, it's such a space where the more open you are, the better it is for everyone mm. yourself, but for others as well. Um, and that's why like, yeah, there's always positives and negatives. Like, and that's what I've learned. Like the positives that have come out of this negative yeah. is crazy. Yeah, but I could just look at that negative, you know, yeah. and I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have coached those girls. I wouldn't be having the job that I'm having today. I wouldn't have done the last 20 months. That's been incredible. Like you just got to look at the positives and then speak to them and get help for it. I don't know. Yeah. My, fa oh, my favorite, my favorite, my favorite. Yeah. We could, we could, we could. I'm a, but my favorite thing of when you were coaching the girls was when I think um, <sighs> someone, was it Loz kicked a field goal and then you ran in and you were like so excited. You jumped up, <laughs> like everyone's fucking hugging everyone. It was the best. Yeah. That clip come up in just about every video. <laughs> yeah. session, like, yeah. They didn't let me live that one down. And no one, let, uh, yeah, that was like a little viral moment. Yeah. It was pretty funny. That's just like passion. Like I was just, yeah. Uh, yeah. It was a fucking unreal kick from Loz. Yeah. So I had to, I had to get in I had the to celebrations. Celebrate, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was funny. But like, that was a cool space. I really enjoyed um, Dawn, like having that season and, and how far. And the, mm. those, like another thing that I think it was like week two of preseason, I'm in this new space. That's when I retired. Mm. And like speaking about being there, like um, those girls were, Huge, huge for me because like I just retired, let go of pretty much my identity. Mm. I'm coaching these girls, it's a new space, like very, like and like I'd only known them for like maybe three weeks, and like they um they like this they've spoken about this JYD thing that the, the team came up with junkyard dogs and mm. like the mentality that the team had and the squad had. And Was it junkyard dogs? Junkyard dogs, yeah. they were just scrappy. Um, I love that. And I was like barking at training and doing dumb <laughs> shit to sort of like buy into it I suppose and like grow it and um I retired and I remember I shed a tear when I told the girls I told the boys that day <laughs> it's, it's funny the dynamics the boys like slapping me out they're like backing me like the tough tough side of it yeah. and I tell the girls and like I, that's when I got a, like a little bit emotional when I was telling them and like they, they were really supportive but then like the next day we came in and they bought me a dog collar with like my player numbers for Melbourne and Titans and like 
Oh, so I wore that in all the games, run and blue shirt and that. So like, just like, um, in, in a new space, like the support they gave me and like, I was able to dive into that as I retired, which I think really allowed me to, um, yeah, just a lot of things happened that the, the transition out of the game really was, mm. um, made a lot smoother, but they really supported me and backed me through, mm. through that initial stage of retirement, um, which was pretty special. But to even have that, like I still got that, the dog collar, uh, not the dog collar, the, um, the dog tag, like dog the old tag. army tags. Oh, I, bro, I thought you, they you said, gave me no, actual no, dog that, collar. No, no like dog tags. I thought you were wearing a dog collar no, in, no. in the castle. I didn't think I saw that. No, you know that army tag? The army like tag. The army dog tags? Yeah, 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 I gotcha. Um, yeah, so it said JYD. Yeah. Um, and then my two playing numbers, which I'm like, fuck, that's so, such a cool little memento now that I would have forever. Man. Um, which is pretty cool. So like they the help they gave me through my retirement was huge. So it was just like, there's been a lot of moments, but like, mm, Wait, so cool. I think that's, I think that's going to be my favorite thing out of footy and professional sport. is like the crew that you meet along the way. Yeah, there. Yeah. Like so fortunate. Like yeah. even like you at storm, like come back to the gold coast. Like we just got the best crew around, even like the guys that we're knocking around with, like here on the gold coast. Like, and, and we're, I think we're talking about before, like Sydney and Melbourne, it's only an hour to hour flight. Like, we can bounce around if we need to, but like just the community that we've got here. Mm. And I feel like it's just slowly like increasing, like good crew, bringing in good crew. Like we yeah. can, we can have a sesh. We can go to Rich Shaw's and have a couple drinks if we want to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like that, like that stuff's fun and that stuff's cool. Even like, um, just back to Nico, like, um, he was, and I was, he's just like, oh, I was on a footy camp earlier this year or he's on a footy camp at some stage. And you know, when they talk about the hero, the hardship and the highlight mm. and he's like, I don't know. He's like, he's like, can you bring it up with Boothie? Cause I'm not sure if I told him on the piss or not, but he said, um, obviously talked about his hardship. Um, he talked about, um, his hero, but he's like, his highlight was, was you. Did he do? Did he tell he you mentioned that? it when we were pissed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't go into too much detail. Yeah. No, nah, he did. He did. But he didn't tell me it was on a camp or whatever. I just I knew that he had mm. mentioned something, so I, I didn't know too much about it. But um, yeah, like that was pretty cool because yeah, like I said, like we've got a special friendship because of the experiences we had, I suppose. And um, he's doing such incredible things that it's just like to know that I had that sort of impact that he's even in a leadership meeting or camp. Sorry talking in front of like an NRL coach, Cammy mm. Kinnis, Dalfin and like those sort of players and like putting me as like a highlight of like having an impact for him. I'm like, I'm like yeah, it's, pretty, it's, special, it's pretty special, man. Yeah. And like it, it'd be vice versa. Like he's like, yeah, we've got ourselves through a lot of things by being with each other mm. and like helping each other through it. Um, so yeah, it's cool to have a spe- like a friendship like that. That's sort of just like, so like a very true friendship. That um, yeah, it's pretty rare. You don't want to go through that shit that sort of we sort of experience, but um, to come out of it and like look at Dali M doing what he's doing, like, Man. and to be the human that he is. That's the main thing. Like, hundred percent with Nico. Like, and he's a little shit. He's a, <laughs> he's, a he's a smart ass, and he's yeah. like can take the piss and he can be annoying and all that. And it, but at his core, he's a genuine human that, mm. um, yeah, for a long time, he's going to do a lot of good things in this space and in, in all spaces he works in. So, it's exciting, man. Um, it's cool to be, yeah, getting put in things like that. Mate, going, going forward, what's exciting? Like what's coming up? What are you, what are you motiv- motivated for coming into it, coming into the, this next chapter? I'm excited to sort of just break free of that sort of footy mold. Mm. Um, obviously working with footy still. It's a, it's such a, it's just worked out well. Like I, I wasn't sure. I didn't, I wasn't sure if I was ready to leave the team and footy because it'd been part of me for so long. But um, I'm just excited to sort of have have impact on um, how I've been impacted, and then also just a bit more lifestyle, I suppose. Yeah. Like what we've been doing, run this morning into a swim and a coffee, into a chat, into um, I'll head home and I'll spend the day of Aisha and we'll do whatever we got planned and. Um, whereas like, otherwise I'd be at footy now. Yeah. And then during the week, I'll be able to get a little bit more lifestyle, which I, I love the footy schedule and everything, but I was just like, all right, I need to break free of that identity a little bit and, and sort of dive into something new. It just felt like it was time. So I'm excited to dive into a new space where, um, I can be 
doing things that I'm passionate about outside of the game, but also still have an impact within the game, which I still have so much love for. Yeah. Um, and so much care for the players and, and everyone involved in the game, um, I should say. But, yeah, I think it's just an exciting time to, to really have a, lo- a balance of life that I haven't experienced for for however long I've been chasing footy since well, bro, I was a kid, really. I'm excited to do a couple more sessions. I'm, bro, I'm excited to get some waves as well. Yes. That'll be amazing. Yes, that's the next tick off the box. I haven't surfed since the injury, so I'm like... Yeah, I'm ready to jump that hurdle. I nearly went out the other week and it was yeah. about six foot. Like, <laughs> pick your nah, times, mate. Pick my time. Yeah. Today is messy as hell. I'm like, I couldn't be out there now, but first clear day this week, I reckon just, we're out there. You're starting to log mm-hmm. and just work your way in. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Um, brother, mate, I'm I'm so pumped that we did this conversation. And for those who are watching, yeah. we're in the new studio. Like we're this, yeah. we're, this is it's it's cool because you were the first um conversation yeah. that we did, like um like back wherever 16 months ago um before it all got it, released it was like early early jan before early we'd gone back i think because we'd had that we had a big party night and then <laughs> like I, it was after that i remember and it was just after new year's i remember so it was like very early jan. it's funny it's funny because i look back on my photo fo- like i'm looking back at my photos and there's a photo of me you and patty um when we we're <laughs> after after one of the parties or during the, whatever whatever it was and it was just like you know we just have like mad like deep chats yeah, like yeah. It, was a, it was a deep chat and i was like <laughs> We got to do a podcast, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, you made it happen, man. But we did it. Yeah, yeah. We did it. Um, and here we are now. But man, no, like, so I think it's a, it's cool to have a full circle. So like when we yeah. first start and then even being here in the new space, obviously like it's not finished, um, but it's, it's cool. It's like, mm. it's a full circle moment. Um, but is. brother, before we wrap things up, is there anything else that you, you wanted to touch on? I know we touched on a fair bit today. Um, no, I think that's, I think it was a cool conversation. I'm glad we had it. Um, yeah. And appreciate you and I appreciate what you're doing in in this space man it's so incredible and it's so needed like I said earlier it's just like it's the way it is going forward like it's got to everyone's got to sort of buy in and and yourself and and Nico and and others are are really driving are are really the drivers at the moment and it's it's having an impact so keep doing what you're doing and um yeah appreciate you so I appreciate it mate Mate, thanks so much for jumping on like I said a lot lot of love a lot of respect so and I'm excited to get you on board with that LPA and a few more sessions in there. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs>